When a team throws a no-hitter, whether it's from one guy or a combined effort, it's typically always the same thing. The opposing team scores zero, the no-hitting team wins, and that's it. But sometimes there are odd anomalies with no-hitters. Edwin Jackson threw a no-hitter on 149 pitches while walking 8 hitters and hitting someone. AJ Burnett did something similar, walking 9 and hitting a batter. The weirdest type of no-hitter, or at least to me, is the one where someone throws a no-hitter yet gives up a run. It's rarely ever happened, but Irvin Santana did so in 2011 with the Angels, throwing 9 no-hit innings but surrendering a run. Well, I thought that was the weirdest no-hitter to be thrown, until now. In 1964, Ken Johnson threw a no-hitter for Houston and lost one to nothing. Wait, what? Seriously, Johnson threw a no-hitter and lost the game. In 1967, Steve Barber and Stu Miller threw a combined no-hitter for the Orioles and lost two to one. So within three years of each other, this happened. It took until 1990 for it to happen again, this time to Andy Hawkins of the Yankees to go eight no-hit innings and lose the game to the White Sox 4 to nothing, with the four runs scoring all on errors and walks. Two years later, Matt Young of the Red Sox did the same thing, throwing eight no-hit innings only to lose 2-1. to one. Jared Weaver and Jose Arredondo then combined for a no-hitter, a game in which featured the Angels losing to the Dodgers 1-0. to nothing. This happened in 2008 and was the most recent time this happened until now. The Cincinnati Reds have been awful to start the year, and we can't say that we didn't see this coming. They let Nicholas Castellanos walk in free agency and traded a ton of their best players away leading up to opening day, so there wasn't much hope in the air for the Reds. If you're a Reds fan, I'm just not sure what to say to make you feel any better, especially after what just went down. The Reds were in Pittsburgh taking on the Pirates with young buck Hunter Green on the mound, and he was lights out. He goes seven and a third innings, and although he did walk five, which was the issue and why he was taken out early, he also struck out nine and gave up zero hits. After walking two in a row in the bottom of the eighth with one out, the Pirates went on to bring home a run on a key Brian Hayes ground ball that the Reds failed to turn into two. The inning ended with the Pirates up one to nothing, and three quick outs later, the Pirates were winners on a day where they failed to record a single hit. Unbelievable. What this is is a win-lose situation for both teams. In the case of the Reds, they were able to no-hit the opposition, yet lost. And for the Pirates, they got no-hit, so that sucks, but they won the game. I'd say the Pirates clearly have the better situation here overall. This is very on-brand with how the Reds are going this year, and manager David Bell must be losing his mind. The pitching has been horrible for them, and the moment they actually have pretty stellar pitching and literally give up zero hits, they lose. You can't make this stuff up. 